Welcome to iTech 285 Client Server Technology. My name is Paul Bastian, and what we are about to embark on is an explanation of how to link Microsoft Access to Microsoft SQL Server 2008 R2 utilizing an OBDC driver. So, as previously mentioned, um, we're going to be demonstrating how to connect. Um, in a client server connection from uh, using access as a client to as Microsoft SQL Server as the server application. So we click, we click here to connect. Right, so most administrators could connect directly to the server so they alone have control over over uh, updates, uh, insertions, deletions, and the like to the server. So right now we have this uh, particular server running on, uh, on double Windows 7 base, and we go to the databases, and we have several databases already installed. Um, this particular database here was created, student info, and it was populated. We look at the tables. So we did create a table called student info. And what we'll see is we are, we're just checking to see what data is already in there. Right? So as we can see, there is a, a, a table already in our database. This is on the server. And we already have some information in there, like a student ID, first name, last name, and a date of birth, just, for, just to show that we have records on the server, right? So next, what we do is we launch Microsoft, Act, Microsoft Office, all access, and we run as administrator. Yes. Nice. We could, we could we could actually go and, and reopen that database first database. So again, we go to external data, we go to ODPC access space, we link to the data source by creating a link table, we say okay, we go to machine data source and we select new. Now we're gonna be collecting them. I'm connecting uh, user data source, okay, or system, but let's use system, right? I know, as we can see, selecting system data, source creates a data source which is specific to this machine and usable by any user who logs on to this machine. So we hit next. And right now we're looking for the driver, and it's the SQL driver, SQL driver. Next, let's say finish. All right, so we just name this driver. We can name it. Um, let's name it student access. Let's say student update. Look for the server here. Yeah. No, well, this is on my Pro Book, so it's going to be there. So we say next. We leave the default and all of these things. And we come here and we're changing the default database, though. We're changing it to what we call it student info. Because that was the name of the table on the database. Next, everything else remains the same, and we say finish. Well, we test the data source. Right, as you see, test completed successfully. So we hit OK. Hit OK here to come out of that window. And as you can see, our student update connection is here. So we say OK.
and here's our student uh, database object called student info. We say okay, and there we have it. It's linked to this is link in the tables. So you know a client a client doesn't have to create their own tables and then have to update the server. Any client could just sit down on a, uh, any machine and just connect to the server and have all the tables necessary to populate. So there we have it. We have the student IDs here and this, this is stuff that already exists on the database. So we can now start populating the database from the client as a normal data entry clerk. Let's just put in some data. 345, um, David, Port, who was born in 1958, 1958, 12th month, 9 um, day, oops, space, 9 day, and let's put another one for good measure, 4567, um, uh, Lisa, Lisa Smith. And Lisa was born in 1969. Same year as me, but in January. And let's put on the first of January as well. Good. So when we flip back to the database. So let it talk to other rows. There we have it. We have just populated the data in the database on the server. All right, so that's all for now. Until we meet again.